Hey guys, this is the uh, video for neutralization reactions, also known as acid-base reactions. Alright, let's get started. So with an acid-base reaction, we'll have an acid reacting with a base, and it's going to always give you water and some sort of salt. And so what you need to remember is that a salt is always going to be... is going to be um, an ionic compound and so it's made from two ions. It doesn't necessarily have to have sodium in it. Um, it could be potassium nitrate, right, because that's plus and minus. So ionic is two ions that are attracted to each other because of opposite charges. All right, and water has to be H2O. It can't be any other thing. It has to be H2O and that's because an acid is H plus and something else and then a base is something and it makes OH. So um, when these two things join together, 1H and 1OH makes two H's and an O. It makes water. All right. So the most simplest form of an acid-base reaction is when you have HCl, or this is the most common form that's used as an introduction, and NaOH. And this is a double replacement type reaction. So we're going to have outside with outside, and that's going to make H2O, and inside with inside. One thing that you have to remember is to make sure you check the charges on these. So sodium is plus one, chlorine is negative one, and what we're gonna end up with is sodium chloride, NaCl. Um, and this reaction's already balanced, so it's pretty straightforward. All right, so for some examples, I've got hydroiodic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. So we've got the acid right here and the base, and I'm going to write it out like this. Okay, and so to determine what we're going to make, I've got H from here and OH from there. So that's going to make one water. And then I've also got uh, sodium, which is Na+, plus, and iodide, which is I-. minus. Remember the positive ion always comes first, okay? I'm going to write that positive goes first. Okay, so if it's first in one of these compounds over here, like sodium was first here, then it's going to be first in the products too, all right? It doesn't matter what order um, it comes in when comparing this and this, it matters that this is first in this compound, this is second in this compound, so this is going to be first in this compound, and it's positive. All right. So next, we've got hydrobromic acid and barium hydroxide. So I've got HBr, and barium hydroxide is BaOH2, because barium is plus 2, and hydroxide is negative 1. And so when these make a compound together, uh, we would need two of these for every one of these, or if you prefer, you can crisscross the charges down. So you need two hydroxides and one barium. All right, so now to determine the product, outside goes with outside. And so I have OH here, and I have H here. It doesn't matter that I have two OHs. We'll take care of balancing the equation later. So I'm going to make a water. And then I've got barium and bromide. So barium is plus 2, right? And you can tell it's plus 2 because hydroxide, everybody knows by now that hydroxide is negative 1 because we've been dealing with pH and pOH and all that stuff. So if you've got two of them, barium has to be plus 2 in order to get this compound to 0. All compounds um, have a neutral charge. It's ions that don't. So these, these will always be neutral. All right, and then we've got bromine. Bromine is negative 1. You can tell by looking at the periodic table, or you can tell because it's bonded to one hydrogen, and hydrogen is 1 plus, and so bromide has to be negative 1. All right, so when we make a compound between those two, remember barium has to come first, so it's 2 plus. Bromide is 1 negative, and so it's going to be BABR2. Now we've got to balance the equation. And so to balance it, 
uh, I'm going to start with anything other than hydrogen and oxygen. So we've got two bromines right here. So I need two HBrs. And then I notice that I've got uh, one barium here, one barium here, so that's good. Now I can balance my hydrogen and oxygen. Now acid-base reactions are a little bit easier, I think, because I've got two hydrogens right here. So I've got two hydrogens. And then I've got two hydroxides. Okay, so that's going to make two waters. One right here and one right here. And now that reaction is balanced. Um, another more advanced way you could balance this is as soon as I saw the reaction, I'm going to rewrite it right here. I notice that I have two hydroxides. Well, I have to have the same number of hydroxide as I have hydrogen so that I make water. So that means I know I have to have two of these. And if I have two hydrogen and two hydroxide, then I'm going to make two waters. All right, let's do one more. Whoops. Zinc hydroxide and nitric acid. So I've got zinc hydroxide and nitric acid. So outside with outside, inside with inside. Um, zinc is going to be plus 2. And nitrate is negative 1. So we're going to make ZnNO3, 2. And then the other product is, of course, going to be water. Uh, so ZnNO3, 2, I need two of these for every one of these because this is negative 1 and this is plus 2, so I need two nitrates to balance out that charge. Now to balance it, I have um, two nitrates right here, so I know I need two nitric acids. Then I have two uh, hydroxide, and I have two hydrogen, so that's going to make two waters, and that one's balanced. All right, that's about it, guys. It's just double replacement reactions all over again. Good luck.